So I've got to go back into the procedure again. I too hold it, but I want to check it again because I just had to whack it. Check my tool hole. Okay, my tool hole is still good. I'm going to level left to right according to the parallel part with the tool hole. Put my spacer in, try it again. This happens sometimes, it's real life welding. Nothing ever is, is just perfect all the time. Even if you've been doing as long as I have, the heat still draws, we make mistakes, but this is good for you to see. Okay, that's level right there. Now when I pull off this time, I'm gonna draw my heat back over what I've already welded to get my heat in the center instead of pulling it off on one side. It's like I've got a little high low. I need to adjust that. High low is uh, the surface inside the pipe is to be smooth uh, and on the same plane or level to one another. And when it's not, they call that high low when you have a, a mismatch on the interior surface of the pipe. It throws your weld off. So you want to try and get that as close as you can. They make feeler gauges for that and uh, tools, and uh, it's not necessary for what I'm doing. I'm gauge all that, and it'd be hard to gauge by myself anyway. A lot of times you'll have a fitter and a fabricator together, but in this situation I'm working by myself. All right, here we go. Now I moved it because it's stuck on me. I sure hope the day doesn't go like this. It's going to be alright though. Okay, level. secure this on the bottom with my tack because once I do that this thing will not be able to move this way but if I did not put my tack somewhere and align it this way I wouldn't be able to roll this side to side with these two tacks in it like that so that's why I fit it up that way according to this it's got to go down just a bit you know I don't think I leveled my flange flange is off a little bit at the face of it, so I've got to come up. That's the beauty of the jack stand. You can raise it, lower it. That's perfect right there according to my level. Then I go back on here. And that's got to go down just a touch, so I'm just going to apply a little pressure on there as I go underneath and secure my piece with another tack. I'm going to turn my heat up. When you're welding overhead, uh, if you want a little hotter heat, I'm going to go up to about 90. This again is 18 8010G. Okay, you can hear that sound of that, uh, like a closure on the well, whereas when you weld an open atmosphere, when you're not stuffing your rod inside a pipe, you can hear the sound different. You'll, you'll register that as you, uh, as you go through the welding and you learn uh, the distinctions of smell, sound, and that. I talked about that in my ebook that I wrote that you got. Okay, according to my gap on both sides, I'm pretty symmetrical. There's really no way to square this off the flange. Uh, you could run a square in here and do some configuration, but it's not necessary. Because these are machine edges, they're factory edges that are true. They've been laid in, uh, in a perfect setting, so they're square. And so if my gap is the same on both sides, I'm okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put my other two tacks in and secure the piece. Well, it's a little tight. I need to kind of blow up my heat up. I'm going to turn my heat up to about 105. on that. 
One thing you want to learn is to weld with both hands, left hand and right hand. Okay, I've got it. Now I can go ahead and reposition my camera on top of the weld so you can actually see the, the puddle as I go around.